BeastNet Podcast, sponsored in part by James Safety Services, OCR Buddy, and supported by the fitness community. Here we discuss all things fitness related, running, rucking, mental health and preparedness, and of course, obstacle course racing. Welcome to the BeastNet. We don't bite hard. Hey everybody, Mike with BeastNet here, and uh, on this episode I have with me Amanda. Um, you've been on the show a few times, right? I um, believe with me. I think like two or three, maybe. I think Just you've been about... with me. You've been with Don too, right? Yeah, I've Don. done two with him. Because mm-hmm. you guys have done the, the Sober Spartans. Yep, we did one with the Sober Spartans, and then we did another one uh, to talk about the Fayetteville Ultra from 2022. Nice. You like my my picture? Oh, oh my gosh, that is a fantastic picture. How have I not seen that? That's awesome. I don't know. I posted it a couple times. That was one of the ones because I was had the flag for like probably seventy percent of the time I've I've been with you oh, yeah. on the races with you guys because I'm not used to the other stuff yet. I think I only did one lap where I was I wasn't the pony. I was one of the ropes. Whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Even though every time the pony, I still think of yeah. I don't know if you ever looked that up. The whole. What is it, Richard Simmons or whatever doing? I'm a pony, but um, yes. every, yeah. I think I have you to uh, thank for for. for oh, my... I think I sent it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when Henry was up there doing it, I just kept thinking about head of him like I'm a pony, and I'm like, oh Jesus. So yeah, that's where my messed up brain goes. But yeah, so since I'm always behind you guys, I've got a couple of these from that event, and then I have one. There's another one that I did at uh, when we did the uh, ultra. That I got from behind behind everyone because I had my NO on the world's toughest. You're not supposed to have your phone. It was in my pocket the whole time. But <laughs> it was like I, I took my camera. There you it go. Just you took your camera. Have a, my camera had a phone function. <laughs> it's always a way around it. <laughs> there is. There is. But I'm a safety guy. I know how to bend rules. But, you, know. you know. You have to. Yeah. You know, you we have a little bit of flexibility to get people on course that need might need a little extra yeah. um attention and especially with a lot of stuff that we have I, I kind of felt like having the phone was wasn't a bad idea yeah so we we, we have some interesting things that we deal with sometimes on course that others don't which you know I, i've said it on a couple of episodes now to other people my entire love of and everything of spartan and tough mutter was gone I'll be completely honest. The, the, this year was gone. No desire, no nothing. Mm-hmm. Didn't want to do any of them, but I'm like, I'll race with the team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. After doing these two races, it's all back. You're back. Because mm-hmm. it reminded me of why I do this. Mm-hmm. It isn't about being the best out there. It isn't about whatever. It's about making sure that others mm-hmm. get through it. Mm-hmm. And that's what was amazing. I mean... Because for those that don't know, we did the we we attempted the Dallas Ultra. Um, all of us still have a little bit of you know feelings about that one. And then we did the world's toughest, which was was tough. Yeah, it absolutely was. I was kind of bummed that I didn't make uh make it down to Dallas for the ultra with y'all, but um there was no way I was missing worlds. I missed it last year due to just some stuff. When, when um, Erica went down and did did the uh, did worlds, there was no way I was going to miss uh, no. this year. No way. But I was and, the same. I will say, you know, I think you're in the the team has brought a lot of fire back for a lot of folks, myself included. Where you know it, it's easy to get caught up in everything, and like mm-hmm. I know I was caught up in the oh I got a compete and do you know age group and try to podium and blah 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 blah. and after a while it just got lonely and I was kind of like what am I doing and I think 2020 the whole shutdown as sad as it was for so many reasons was kind of like a reset that I just was like I need people I need the right people I need the right reason and um and I think that's the hardest part is the right people Mm-hmm. And that's where I've run into issues in the past where I've not always had the right people around me that has made me start to have issues. And that was one of my reasons. Now I didn't, the only connection I had to Spartan was through one of the programs that Spartan has. Um, and the person running it, me and him did not get along. And the relationship soured really quickly. 
And when that relationship soured, my entire feeling of Spartans were soured with it. And you run into that sometimes where, you know, your relationship with someone within a group sours and it sours your entire feeling for the whole group and everything. And that was kind of the problem that I ran into. And that's why it was really neat on this being on World's Talk Fist and having Dan with us. Yeah. Because I got to talk to Dan about that person and some of the th issues that I had. And it made me, you know, and it made me kind of see it in a different light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that person isn't the entire program, isn't the entire Spartan, isn't the mm -hmm. entire everything. It's one person. Yeah. There's some, um, some amazing folks within Spartan that um, over the years have just kind of all thought about, you know, and I'm. Um, I hope they keep I hope the good ones stick around. I know we've had mm -hmm. some some moving of faces and, and yeah. jobs and everything, but some good yeah, ones. I, I hope we keep you know. There's been some really good ones that, you know, kinda, you know, we lost along the wayside, but I mean that happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it really does, which was amazing too, but on world's toughest. I don't know if you, you know remember Dustin. Dustin was one of the people walking around with the camera. Mm -hmm. Used to oh. be the announcer mm -hmm. for spartan years ago and i can he's my favorite memory of spartan was at the beast in montana i think it was 16 16 or 17 one of those years instead of saying the normal speech that you're supposed to give at the beginning of a spartan because it was supposed to be like this was his i'm quitting speech basically <laughs> but he went up and did independence day the speech oh, wow. from independence day like word for word mm -hmm. and in the way his voice i don't know if you know dustin but the, his voice is just like melodious i mean it's perfect and he did that and i mean it was like by the time he finished you're like i could take on everest mm -hmm. and then you hit that first hair at montana and you're like i'm gonna die <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was it was really cool i mean i think that's one of the things world's i met met a bunch of people i hadn't seen in years yeah. because i think 2020 took a lot out of me because all of a sudden i was like before 2020, I was a big member of a, multiple groups. I was always seen out there doing the podcast, doing everything else, you know, an ambassador, you know, street team for for Spartan, everything else. And I was always out there. And then all of a sudden, 2020, it's all taken away. Mm -hmm. And somehow I, you know, and I used that and I, I lost all the weight. But then once I lost the weight and came back, I had so many people like, oh, I don't know if I can race with you now because you're too fast. Oh. And I'm like, well, I could slow down. <laughs> but it was just that whole thing of like oh you're in a lot better shape now we're not at the same pace anymore and i'm like but i can slow down mm -hmm. but it was just that whole thing and I, I feel like once i came out of 2020 i lost a lot of that that team feeling mm -hmm. yeah. and that's what i think you know like i said with you guys and doing everything with more heart than scars the last you know two races brought a lot of that back it reminded me if you have the right people around you it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah yeah. This last year was, was really, um, kind of cool. So leading up to, to, um, well, leading up to worlds, I ended up doing, um, a whole lot of training and in doing so I went up to more of the Northeast races. So I did like Killington, New Jersey. Um, I did some of the toughest up in a uh, toughest up in Pittsburgh and whatnot, but so by being up there, what was cool is that those were the races that I did originally back in like 2016, 17, 18. Those were where I primarily went. And so I hadn't seen a lot of the folks that were, that I had gotten to know. Like my very first ultra was a New Jersey ultra. And mm -hmm. on that course, that's a hell of a course. And you're on it for two laps. And there's a lot of us that were just like, oh my God, you know typical kind of second lap feelings and I met so many people that I am still to this day you know would consider friends even though we don't see each other regularly but in this last year venturing up there more and even going up to like New Jersey with um with the team with more heart um I got to see a lot of those folks and those were the original like friends race friends you know and and so that was really cool and also doing it in the context of being with the team it was just kind of this almost like full circle where it was like you know the before i tried to sport a red headband i just tried to 
get to the finish line and mm-hmm. you know on the mountains and um met some amazing people and now i am in no way shape or form trying to compete but i'm just trying to get someone else to the finish line and it's just i don't know it was kind of cool this last year seeing kind of everyone i felt like from and that's a awesome. long time ago and now so and see for me i for what whatever reason even like the friends that i normally see that were at races i haven't like i haven't seen any of them it's only been like the the more heart than scars because like normally for me dallas would have been like race number eight or nine on the year mm-hmm. dallas was race number one for me this year mm-hmm. i did no other races all year besides i mean i did do ccu i did the other not obstacle course races but other type i did ccu i did ragnar i did a couple of those but um I didn't do, it wasn't my normal season. Mm-hmm. And I think that was one of the other things for me. I like had completely stepped back. You know, I did triathlons. I did a couple other things this year, but part of it too was the big move to Houston. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a big move. So the traveling just wasn't there. I only did local races, races I didn't have to travel for, you know? And so Dallas really wasn't traveling. I drove two and a half hours, <laughs> you know, cause I'm in Houston now, <laughs> but I mean, so it was, that was one of the big things like world's toughest being able to do it because I'm so close and everything like that. So, I mean, it was, if it wasn't for being so close, I wouldn't even probably even have done those. And if it wasn't for being with the team, I probably wouldn't even have done those. Mm-hmm. But it was one of those things that they're like, oh, hey, they need you, you know, the team. I'm like, oh, yeah, I mean, whatever. So. <laughs> so but, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for being there. Cause I know we were still trying to figure out who all was going to be on the team in the last bit of weeks leading up. And it was, you know, so push comes to shove, you know, we've done some pretty amazing things, but it is nice to have a whole team and have Which, good morale within it too. And the people, you know, you have, yeah. you, you were fun. And I was really grateful that I got to actually meet you face to face. Oh my gosh. And get a hug and hang out. I was like, what? Because <laughs> we've talked a few times on the podcast and everything else, but we've never, until World's Toughest, I never met you in person. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of like that. I'd met Tegan mm-hmm. um, because she came up with Nicole a year ago okay. and did Seattle. So I'd met Tegan then. And other than that, I met most of them for the first time at the Ultra. Mm-hmm. I'd met Joey last year at Dallas for a couple of minutes. We had dinner the night before, but I did the race with another friend. You know, not with the team that last year in Dallas. So, I mean, I really hadn't met anybody until the Ultra. And even the Ultra, I didn't really meet. I mean, Joey wasn't with us on the Ultra. He was on the the next day on the, the Super and the Sprint. But so it was really neat for me to meet everybody mm-hmm. and in person rather than just this. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So to, to give hugs and everything else and all that and to really experience what it is. I mean, I don't think anyone completely understands what running with more than heart, more heart than scars means, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it's all about the athlete. I mean, you give up yourself to the athlete It's all about them, mm-hmm. what they need, what you need to do to, for the team to help them. And it's like, I kept telling Joey, I mean, whatever you need me to do. I mean, I, I, like I said, I carried the flag for most of it because I don't have the experience. Mm-hmm. You know, I did do one lap is on ropes. Um, and it was, I think it was actually by accident. I picked up the rope because somebody else was doing something and then just, okay, I, I guess I got the rope. <laughs> I think you grabbed it for me a couple of times. <laughs> Okay, I guess I got the rope and I had it for a lap. And then a couple of times, I think I did grab it from you for to help for a minute. But yeah. that was kind of the thing that was really neat. By the time we finished the 30 miles, there was a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Where it was just kind of like no words being said, but all of a sudden, yeah, I've got your rope and I'm taking care of it for a minute. And then, mm-hmm. you know, we're just passing back and forth. And I mean, you get into that, you gel as a team yeah, and you just do what needs to be done. Yeah. And, you, you know, we get, you know, do everything is a team and i mean that that's what was amazing to me i think by the end yeah. by the end of it the way we were all gelling as a team and just doing it mm-hmm. and like i said it was all all about marla and getting her yeah getting her that 25 plus yeah, and the, <laughs> the look on her face when she got the 25 oh yeah. gosh yeah her the tears of joy and just she was so oh my gosh it was it was a really emotional and there's there's actually a photograph of her um and i don't even know i don't recall the picture being taken but someone got it it was just she and i both 
kind of geeking out right as she got her bib. And it means so much to just be in that bubble of joy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and I think that's what was weird that there's so many pictures that I keep randomly coming across of us, you know, doing that because mm -hmm. there were so many people. And I think that's what was amazing at World's Toughest. So many people that were just cheering us on, you know, really not cheering Marla on. Mm -hmm. we just happened to be in that bubble like you said right. cheering her on getting pictures with her and we just you know we were there so we we were in the pictures so there's a bunch of them that i keep finding oh, uh, the weirdest one for me i keep thinking that was when they did the national anthem that was still the creepiest thing but <laughs> that was great turning around and seeing mm, all of a sudden yeah i'm like holding it up <laughs> and then all of a sudden everyone turns to me and i'm like wait oh no <laughs> oh it's me <laughs> i've got the flag uh oh <laughs> Yeah, no, that was great. My there arm was, was shaking by the end of that, though. I will tell you. Yeah, <laughs> my arms were shaking. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. But yeah, <laughs> you didn't let on, so that was good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, yeah, that that was it. Was, when whenever I've been with um, an athlete, um, it's been it's really amazing to see, you know, everyone kind of reacts differently. Some they're just getting used to trusting other people. Mm -hmm. um, some are so used to it. They might boss us around, you know? Um, and I, it was interesting because I had not met Marla prior to worlds and um, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go. I genuinely just, I, because I didn't know what her capabilities were um physically or what her um temperament would even be like or her tolerance for like pain and you know there's so many different things that, that go into what you need to be mindful of um but you know like you said i we did we fell into such a, a groove um like the first lap where you know with the sprint lap so we go out and we're just running for the most part, for the first lap. And we're also feeling out the terrain and everything. Um, yeah. Even with that, I felt like we were already starting because like Joey and I have done where, so I'll be horse, which is, you know, in the very front pulling the wheelchair, he's a, you know, break. And he and I have done that together with a handful of athletes, but um, you know, like I said, some have a, different tolerance for like the bumpiness and things like yeah. that yeah getting to know what marla can tolerate you know we, it got to the point where i was just using hand signals i didn't even have to call anything out i could tell them what the terrain looked like or where i was going and um and everyone just kind of synced in fell right into it and marla was just along for the ride and it was great you know i mean she had her she, you know her funny jokes here and there about you know, things we would do, but, but yeah. for the most part, it was, um, it just really gelled. And so I, I knew after that first lap, I'm going to say not that it would be easy by any means, but I felt a, way more confident after that first lap and just feeling, you know, the natural kind of flow of things. So, yeah. And, and I agree. It was great. I mean, that, that first lap we went, you know, kind of busted through it. And then I wasn't expecting to go straight into the second lap. <laughs> I didn't yeah. like bring any because I, I didn't bring any water nothing but luckily uh michael was nice enough to mm -hmm. to let me use his water so he let yeah. me suck on his hose but um <laughs> i think i got a couple too <laughs> yeah because it was just one of those i wasn't expecting that if i known we were gonna go two, i would have grabbed it i thought we were gonna take a break after but then it's mm -hmm. like okay cool you know yeah. but it was really neat too how the group just kind of really quickly gelled into oh okay i guess we're doing two and like we just kept going mm -hmm. you know and that's kind of how it was really nice to the whole night like everybody every time like we we're like okay we're gonna do this and everyone's like all right cool let's do it mm -hmm. you know because i don't yeah. think i didn't go on with the idea that we were gonna do 25 that night no and i don't think anyone did i don't think anyone did no and i think the original plan was to do three in the evening and two in the morning mm -hmm. which you know, once we got through the first two, we realized kind of what that would look like. And it felt good. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it, I, I know I personally, I wasn't, um, 
there was a couple parts of me that was just rubbing because I had a new harness that I was like, eh, you know, maybe let's hand that over. But other than that, it everything felt good. Like, yeah. and that's when it's a good thing. I've been on on a wheelchair with um, team members. Excuse me, my dog's barking. Um, with team members that didn't necessarily pull as hard and assist as hard, and you'll get tired at the end. And so. I never felt that way. We all were doing our part and it was yeah. very evident. And that was, yeah. which was awesome. And like I said, I mean, it just seemed like everybody gelled so quickly and, you know, they just made the adjustments as we went, you know, and it was one of those things, like I said, after that second lap, we took a quick break. I think I had like two tacos and then Joey's like, let's go. And I'm like, okay, I guess we're going again, you know? And then it was kind of like when he said, we're going to keep basically, you know, oh, we're going to do another one. Oh, we're going to do another one. I'm like, Okay. There was no part of me. I would say after about like lap four, I had some issues because the shoes that I have, that was only like my third time, really. I mean, I'd worn them and ran like a 10K, done a couple other things, and then warmed during the ultra, but they were still weren't completely broken in, I don't think. I think pretty sure they are now. But <laughs> but after about the fourth, I had like one spot that I'm like, oh. Oh, that's not going to be good, you know, and I changed socks, hoping that it'd be good. And right about the end of it, all of a sudden I started, I knew I had a blister and it popped and I'm like, well, guess it popped. Guess we're going to keep going and just, <laughs> all right, let's do it. You know, going, but I mean, once we hit that 25, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. And then in the morning, you know, it's like, yeah, we get up, we do it. We do a lap. I know. I think Marla was kind of hoping for like two laps in the morning and I'm like, no, it's not going to be good, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we might've been able, I know, you know, so Jonathan and I went out after the mm -hmm. five just to go play. Cause we were like, well, you know, we wanted to rest and we're here and let's go play. So he and I went out for another lap and, um, we decided to come back in, but if we had done two laps in the morning with Marla, we would have needed to probably have started right after he and I were finishing that lap. Like we were trying, we're doing the math and, um, you know, in order to finish, to start at the right time and to end at the right time, you know, according to yeah. rules to be a finisher, um, if she wanted those last two, we would have had to have started. Like we came in, it was like 4.30, yeah. I want to say. We would and I think that's what everyone was, then. yeah everyone was worried about they're like we go for two and we start too late mm -hmm. we're gonna have problems because with the time we'd have to start you have to start you know for those that don't know you have to do at least one lap after that starts after 7 a.m mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so if we start too early we're gonna be before that 7 a.m which means we have to do that second lap mm -hmm. but if we start too late you get back in without enough time to do that last lap after seven. So it becomes one of those like, mm, yeah, it's a juggle. Yeah. It's a juggle. You're playing a game. I mean, and if you fail, you got bra, it's going to be a bad day. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those, you know, you, you play that, that game because if you don't, if you don't meet those rules, no matter how many miles you got, technically yep. you're not a finisher. Mm -hmm. Yep. God, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah. So, and that was kind of one of the things that they were debating, you know, it was Dan, Joey, and pretty much Marla, where I'm just out of it, like looking around going, whatever you decide, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah, pretty <laughs> you know? much. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah. And that's when it was kind of like, they're like, yeah, you know, we don't want to take the chance of not being a finisher. And she got, I mean, her original goal was 15 miles. Mm -hmm. We doubled that. Doubled it. Doubled, doubled it. it. Yeah. And then yeah. I think the hard part was, is after, oh, was it probably lap three? when pretty much the entire course was wet. <laughs> yeah. It like got it didn't matter where sloppy. you were. Real it got sloppy. sloppy. Yeah. Real sloppy. And it got colder. And mm -hmm. I know that that with that, with that cool air and, the, and dampness, her arthritis was getting worse. Um, when we were doing um, um, Everest, one one of the times she did it, I went up to the top to try to help grip her hand mm -hmm. 
Um, the angels were up there willing to help. And that was fantastic. But by just grabbing her hand, sure. Yeah. It was, it was really bothering um, her arthritis, her thumb. I don't know if you saw, I mean, it's yeah, I did. right. And yeah. so um, I went up there to help her grab it. And even knowing where to grab, it was really difficult to grab. And so I knew that that was like her pain level was going up yeah. and she was so stoic with everything. So, you know, we were getting, you know, we were kind of sliding around in the slop mm -hmm. and, and she's starting to hurt. And it's that moment where, you know, our moments where you're like, Oh, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. We have to go for another one. But you know, we, we, we did it and it was really, that was really rad. <laughs> And it was good. I mean, that last lap was amazing though, because I mean, it was in the daylight. Everyone could see, everyone was cheering her. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people came up to her, even like, you know, once we went back into the pits and were like, you're an inspiration. There was one lady that was there that said something about, I guess her, the, one of the people that were pitting for them was in a wheelchair mm -hmm. and said, after watching you do that, they have hope. Yep. And those are the things that I, I mean, just make me like, okay, this is why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's like next year I was talking to a friend and they're like, you, you should do world stuff. Somebody would actually run it next year. And I'm like, I don't think I want to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, I mean, doing what we did this year is way more rewarding. Rewarding. Even if I thought I had a chance at podium, that would be more re rewarding to me. It would be to help, you know, someone like Marla. Yeah. Yeah. The, the tears of joy and mm. the sincere gratitude that just kind of oozes off of her and other athletes when they're you know crossing the finish line is really it doesn't get old it'll play no. that way it doesn't get it old. doesn't and, and i mean even even someone like and this is kind of going back and i had mentioned this earlier the fayetteville 2022 ultra where erica did the um she did the spartan ultra and we got her through it and yada, yada. But even someone like her, who's been racing for years, the joy that she had when she realized, oh, wait, we actually finished and we're crossing the finish line and just the sheer excitement and giddiness and awe <laughs> that she had and just, you know, sitting back and all I could do is just like applaud her and I'm looking at her and I'm like this is fantastic you know somebody actually leaned over to me at some point and was like why are you applauding her y'all are part of the team and I was like because if it weren't for her I wouldn't be here yeah you know and oh okay you know and but she's she even with all of her experience was still so grateful and you know excited and so I really hope Marla gets you know has that opportunity to do that and she was talking about doing Fayetteville next year. I don't know if that's a secret yes. or not. But um, I I don't think it's a secret. We're, it's revenge. We're all okay. I mean, for all of us that were there in Dallas. That that's our revenge because <laughs> with how amazing World Tough has felt, the Ultra was amazing in its own right, but at the same time was disappointing. Yeah, yeah. because we couldn't finish. I mean, once we hit, once we hit that, you know the the middle whatever you call it I, my transition. brain just went dead transition yeah. transition it's been a long day but <laughs> once we hit transit i mean one we were all wrecked that course was brutal and then two we just didn't have the time mm -hmm. there just wasn't time we're like we there's no time to do this you know and that was the hardest part is coming to that conclusion in your brain like we want to our bodies are wrecked but we we if we we can Mentally and physically, it's going to be a push, mm -hmm. but we're looking at the time hacks going, it's no way, mm -hmm. you know, and that was very hard. Mm -hmm. That was very hard. So that's for a lot of us. That's what, you know, we, we want to go to Fayetteville because that's, it's redemption. Yeah. Getting her what we, we feel like we should have got her in Dallas. Yeah. And, and it was rough for me because I was like, that was my introduction to the team. Mm -hmm my first time racing with the team was that race and i'm like eh, you know so with straight for the gusto on that one <laughs> straight for the gusto straight for an ultra <laughs> but you know and i had the i had the gear bag pretty much the whole time and i'm like good thing i've been rocking for a couple of years now because i needed that but yeah 
But I mean, and it's just, but it was one of those things, nobody in the team, you know, me and uh, James were in the back pretty much with the, the flags and the ruck. And then James got hurt, you know, and I, I, I was up with the team and then say, Hey, I'm going to back up a little bit so I can catch James, see how he is, talk to him for a minute, talk to him. And he's like, yeah, my knee's done. I, there's no way. And it's like, that was a tough one as well, because I'm like, I don't like to leave someone behind. But at the same time, he's like, I'm calling it at the next, you know, and I'm done. And I knew we were already behind with Marla. So it's like, we just kind of got to go, you know, and that was also one that made it really rough was, you know, basically saying, okay. And even though he's telling me to, at the same time, you're like, <clears throat> but then it kept ringing in my head. <laughs> it sounds really bad to say this dingo from years ago telling me, you know, in the, the hurricane heats, place the mission first. That's the first one. That's one. Leave no one behind. That's back with a few. Mm -hmm. Place the mission first. And that was what I just kept thinking in my head. I'm like, you know, James, I'm sorry, but okay. You know, and I took the, the gear bag and the flag both and went back up and met up with the team. And I'm like, yeah, he's, he's done. He's out. And it was a tough one because I've been in that situation too, where another one where I DNF'd in Hawaii, my first DNF was because we slowed down to help somebody and in helping them, it took us out. And I mean, in my defense, I did have my, my foot wasn't a full boot, but, um, <laughs> but we missed a time hack by 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. Norm pulled us at 30 seconds with 30 seconds. Yeah. Just brutal. It was. It was 30 seconds, but I just couldn't move. And it was one of those things where I was looking at us like, look at you. You can barely. I'm like, I started like this. And he's like, I know, but you can barely move. Because my foot was in a full boot from like knee down the air boot, the air cast. Yeah, going for a, a, be a beast in Hawaii. Not my brightest move, but. We all have those moments or I mean, two was, or three or more. I, mean, I don't know. Like, I was in Hawaii. I had paid for it. I mean, might as well try. But. My my dog is looking at me like I, I think he hears. More. <laughs> he probably hear, he's like, "What is that noise? Where's that person at?" Animals, they're fun. They are fun and when they've been lost all day. Stop. So that's where we've been lucky. Is my wife's working from home right now, so the animals get her at home all day long. So it's going to be interesting when we we go home for Thanksgiving because the dog goes to a sitter, but the cats just stay home. We have an automatic feeder. We hit the button and it feeds them. But I take a I have a <laughs> I have a ring camera because we got an alarm system. So I, I had a ring camera and I don't need it anymore because of the alarm system. But I take the ring camera and set it up in the kitchen or in the the dining room, and it looks through the dining room and the living room. So I can watch the cats and every once in a while, if I don't see them, I'll start talking to it. And they'll suddenly pop out like, what's going on? What's happening? I actually have a camera in my, in my living room for the dogs, just so I can every now and again, be a little creeper. And I use it for my kids sometimes. Too. <laughs> we don't have any, all of ours are gone. They, they all moved out. We lived in Houston. All the kids live in Seattle. So it worked out. Well, I'm yeah. still at home and, and, and still. They got, we got three more years till they're all out or at least See, graduated. I don't know. I had kids way too young, but it works out. Cause I'm like 45. The youngest moved out in the day. Like he moved out. My wife's like, so we're moving to Texas, right? Oh my gosh. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah. I had mine late. So I did a whole lot of nonsense in my twenties and then right around 30 had my kids. And now I'm like, oh. mm. so that was my, I, I did, I did a bunch of nonsense in my teens and then had my, my, my kids. I had four kids by the time I was 25. Wow. Yep. So like I said, my youngest okay. is 21 and I'm 45. Okay. Okay. So, well, yeah. But now, and now you've got all this free time. So exactly. I, free I leave, time and money. I leave and my kids are like, when are you coming home? And not because they miss me, but because, you know, they want me to go to the grocery store, I'm sure. But yeah. um, grocery, <laughs> get food, cook dinner, that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 But, oh. Yeah, they were, they were, um, when, when I went down to Worlds, they were like, where are you going? And why are you doing this? You know, and it's pretty much once a month I'm going somewhere. So I know they're looking forward to this winter when 
we're off for a couple months and mom stays home. Yeah. And yeah, I got lucky. My, my youngest actually for a couple of years up until COVID, he would race with me. Mm -hmm. So he did like one trifecta a year for, I think three years. Okay. So, and he would just go out and do the, the local races with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he'd go out and do them with me. It was a blast. It was fun to, you know, get that, that time with him. Um, but yeah. So he did a few with me. And then I, he always rubs it in my face too. Battle Frog. I never got to do Battle Frog, but he did. Oh. <laughs> because I broke when I talked about having my foot in a boot. I broke my foot two weeks before Battle Frog. Mm. So I couldn't race it. So he took my entry and did it. And then Battle Frog closed the door. It's like a week later. I never got to do Battle Frog either. And I'm really upset yeah. about that. I would have loved yeah. to have done that. that I thought about it. Yeah. But I was like, it was two weeks after breaking all five metacarsals on my left foot. So nah. I thought about doing it on the crutches, but I'm like, any hanging obstacle, if I drop and hit that foot, it's going to be a lot of pain. So that go that choice maybe kind of mitigates the bad choice about racing in Hawaii. Well, they cancel each other out <laughs> a little bit. In my defense, my doctor told me it was okay. Mm hmm. But I'm pretty sure the doctor didn't completely understand what I was asking. So mm -mm. I asked mm -mm. if I could do a Spartan race in the boot. And he's like, as long as you don't land on that foot, you'll be fine. I'm like, okay. I came back and I have the, the I still have the air cast. It's in my garage. It's like a trophy. But it's got huge gouges in the sides. Like all the air pockets were popped and full, full of mud. <laughs> I mean, just destroyed. And when I came back to my doctor appointment, my orthopedist is like, I don't think I understood what you were asking because if it was this, I would have said no. And I'm like, hmm, too late now. <laughs> it's been because I, <laughs> I attempted the beast and DNF'd, I think about my all nine or 10, I think. And then I did the super the next morning. So, and I did finish the super. So, with the boot. But okay. so, so yeah, I have a picture that shows like I have a walking stick with the boot and then. You know, the metal hanging from it. I'm like, um, never do that again. So needs to be a canvas. <laughs> it should be. Anyway, it's one of those nights that I still have the boot. I still have the walking stick because I didn't have it. I couldn't find one before I left. And like the first race when we were going, um, some lady had two and she's like, I only need one of these here. You can have this. Oh, and I'm like, okay. So perfect. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. But the things we do. Do. I think that's too why you know I kind of love being able to help people do it because mm -hmm. it's you know one of those things that it's such an amazing experience especially when you have the people helping you mm -hmm. you know when I did that one with my foot broken I mean I had a team with me that was you know a little overly protective kind of like Joey sometimes but you know <laughs> he means well <laughs> he does. He does. if you're listening to this Joey love you just you know had to say it but <laughs> but you know a little overly but I mean made sure I was doing things correctly, wasn't hurting myself, was doing okay, was moving right. Um, and I had that whole team with me. And then, you know, being able to do that with others, it's like, you know, I have so many memories and all my best memories of Spartan races was helping somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, 2016 Montana, we were the final racers to come in. We were the last ones. You know, Hammond caught up to us and my friend Stevie looked at him and said, you can do what you want, but you're not taking us off this mountain. And he looked at her and said, everyone behind you quit. Oh. So let's go. And he stuck with us for the rest of the race, you know, and it was one of those, one of my friends had rolled her ankle and was limping and the other one had a hip issue, but we're like, okay, you guys want to keep going? They're like, yeah, let's keep going. And there was so many times we looking going like, you're perfectly healthy. You could just go. And I'm like, yeah, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. no. No. no yeah no we started this together we're finishing this together yeah. you know and we were we were the final racers i think it was over 12 hours on that mountain mm. it was brutal mm. Mm. you know but we finished it and but those are the memories that stick with you and that's the one thing i think with Mar heart and scar is like this memory with marla that's going to stick with her that's going to stick with me mm -hmm. you know all the amazing things that we you know the course, the team, you know, and having the team gel so well and, and everything else. Um, and everyone like just kind of fell into their, their roles, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you and Henry back and forth on the horse, mm -hmm. you know, and then whoever was, you know, holding the ropes, you know, me, I, I kind of, you know, in the back with the, the flag and 
whatever, you know, took the ropes for a bit when all of a sudden you needed my help. But like I said, there was no communication. I mean, no verbal. Verbal, no verbal. Yeah. But, but it's like, like everyone knew kind of what the pieces mm -hmm. needed to be. And if you just saw it slipping from someone else, like someone would, you know, jump yeah. right in. It was literally like a well-oiled machine. Oh, and we awesome. with no instruction manual. Yeah. It was literally just, I mean, because I had never raced with Henry. I'd never raced with Dan, never had had never raced with you. Um, so it was like, I don't know, let's see how we all mesh. And yeah. I say I've only raced the one time and the only person that was on that team that was on that team that that was Tim. He's the only one I'd race with. I raced with him in Dallas and that was it. So it was kind of one of those the the way it meshed was just awesome. Mm -hmm. So and I and I couldn't imagine how well it was gonna mesh. I mean, Joey just kind of, you know, is the no better way of say it, but the ringleader, just keeping it all together. But not having to do a whole lot to keep it all together. Yeah. You know, just his presence and everything else, you know, kept us going. But when things you know, were a little bit off, he was just one or two words and, you know, whatever. Or, you know, we're in the, you know, in the tent. Hey, you got five minutes. Cool. All right, let's go. You know, and we just, yeah. everyone stepped into line and said, okay, okay, let's do this. We're here for Marla. Let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. He is a natural cat herder. <laughs> he is. He is a natural cat herder. He actually reminded me of that today when he had to herd me do for, for something going on that, that I had forgotten about for an upcoming right. race. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. And I'll be honest, you get so many of the chats going and you're like, which uh -huh. one was what and what's going on? That's why you get all the time at the wrong, oh, wrong chat. Well, yeah, because there's like 10 of wrong, them. Wrong thread, wrong thread. <laughs> yeah, wrong thread, My, wrong thread. Yeah. But it's like, so. he couldn't even like focus on... So I missed this last week when everyone went to Newberry, South Carolina. Um, I missed that one mm. from due to family stuff. But so Central Florida is my next one. And so I was thinking of Florida, but he's in the mindset thinking of Newberry. And so I had to cautiously distract him from Newberry to ask him a question about Florida. And I don't know how that man juggles all the things he does it's really I amazing know. i tried to even remotely compliment him or acknowledge what he does i tell him all the time he needs an assistant and it's just all up here mm -hmm. and he just does it and he's so good at it and he's also such a good person that people automatically like want to do him right and like yeah. want to do work if he asks them or a job, if he asks them, because he's just, a, he's a great, he's a great race director. And he is, he, he's great at what he does. And see, my biggest problem, I'll be honest, is I'm horrible at communicating on text and all that kind of stuff. I will say something that anybody reading it is like, you are the biggest dick in the world. And I'm like, that's no way what I meant, you know, but in my brain, it's just quick, easy, boop. And then all of a sudden I go back and read it and I'm like, oh yeah, no, 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 I completely understand why you, why you felt that way. I, I do now that I'm reading, right now that I'm reading this, you know, but, and cause I've had that with me and Don, Don's known me for, I mean, most people know this, me and Don met in preschool. So we've known each other a while. So Don knows my style of communication is quick to the point. Just, and a lot, like nine times out of 10, it comes across as the most, like when I'm talking, no, but when I'm typing and writing and messages, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had so many times, like you know, and even at work, they're like, "Go back and read your 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 email," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." I see what you, I see what, yeah. Well, there's no tone, there's no yeah. you know personality in there. It's like I see what I see where that person's mad at me now. I didn't, oh. I didn't get it until I reread that. So, but it's it's tough, and that's why one of the things that's amazing with Joey, I don't know how he can put tone into things so well sometimes because I'm just like so much going on because that's me as i end up with so much going on that it's just i need to get this done and over with so and off mm -hmm. it goes and then all of a sudden someone's mad at me and i'm like well, what's their problem <laughs> then i'm like go back and read and i'm like oh yeah okay i see it now i see it mm -hmm. you know then i have to apologize like mm. <laughs> i'm like call me so we can talk because if i keep doing this over text it's just mm -hmm. gonna get worse you know yeah 
Yeah, yeah. Because I'll be me and Joey, that was one of the first, like our first communications actually did not go well because I just not great at the yeah, the text communication. Yeah. And finally I'm like, dude, just call me so we can talk <laughs> before this becomes bad. <laughs> yeah. I was just he's a really he's also really good on the on the phone, but he does get you know, he's he gets a little distracted here and there. So sometimes I'll be on the phone with him. But, and he's got so much going because it's like one of those things that I know when the first time we were talking, I was talking about something that was a month out. And he's like, and I know in his brain, he's probably thinking, I've got four races before then. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't even have time to think about what's a month out. But if, to me, the very next race is a month out. And so, it, you know, and it becomes one of those weird things that you you forget sometimes, you know. Yeah. But yeah, what he does is amazing. I mean, and, you know, the volunteer, everything he does. Because I don't think any a lot of people see what happens behind the scenes. Because a lot of people don't think about it. I mean, for me, I got my car, drove two hours, two and a half to Dallas for the race for both weekends. Mm -hmm. Joey had to load up a trailer mm -hmm. full of gear, mm -hmm. full of wheelchairs, full of everything he might need in case the wheelchairs break, mm -hmm. and drive from Georgia. Mm -hmm. With a bunch of hoodlums like me and yeah. tim and jonathan <laughs> a bunch of hoodlums but i mean and that's what a lot of people i don't think see that back the back side of it mm -hmm. they see what's amazing and everything we're doing on course and all that stuff and they don't see the back end where you know one of the reasons everyone's like why do you why don't you do more on the west coast you know and that was one of the thoughts i kept having why don't you do more on the west coast because the only race i'd ever done was with nicole and tegan and at that point, Nicole could pretty much walk. So we mm -hmm. never had the wheelchair. We didn't have any of the gear because we didn't right. need it. Right. But then all of a sudden doing these races and seeing everything Joey has to bring, I'm like, no wonder we don't do it on the West Coast. Yep. Because the drive from, you know, I mean, Texas to Texas was 34 hours from Seattle. Mm -hmm. Georgia's got to be pretty close. It's a you long, know? it's a long, it's a long you know, one. It, well, I will say, so he, you know, we, we did our, our first Northeastern race with a wheelchair um, in September. We went up to New Jersey and in doing so, they had the van and the trailer. And so Joey had to load everything up. He had to, they drove from Atlanta up here. So I'm in Richmond, Virginia, which is so, um, God, nine hours from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So he drove here. Everyone crashed here for the night. And then we left from here to go up to um, New Jersey. And it was like another six and a half hours or something. Like that. The amount of tolls alone and the amount of gas, especially hauling, because sometimes he has his truck. Um, and then sometimes he has the van, depending on who's riding with him. Um, it's an ordeal. And so we actually were trying to figure out a way to have an extra trailer with extra wheelchairs just to keep here at my house as the central kind of hub for if we go do Northern races, he wouldn't have to bring the trailer all the way from Georgia. He could just come here, pick it up. I mean, ideally having that kind of scenario kind of all over the country would be so awesome. It would be amazing. And, but the and then we could do all that. But yes, the cost. I mean, just looking into the trailer and looking into all the equipment, like one round of equipment, you know, he's got like four of everything basically mm -hmm. in his trailer, you know, just getting one or two. Um, It was, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of, yeah. A lot. And I think that's what a lot of people don't realize too. Joey's not getting paid for this. None of us are. We pay our way. You know, for me, like I said, it was just a three hour drive in a hotel room, bleh, whatever. Um, I would have done that anyway. For Joey, it's like you said, the gas, the tolls. If that wheelchair breaks and he has to replace it, nobody's paying for it. Mm -hmm. Joey is. You know, I mean, more hearts and scars. Yes, there, there are some donations that that more hearts and scars gets, but I can guarantee you that it's not enough to cover the cost. A lot of that's coming out of Joey's pocket. A lot. There's yeah. A lot that comes out of his pocket. And I think a lot of people don't realize, I mean, what he really 
gives to this team. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, you know, his time, his energy, um, his sanity. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not sure he has much of that left. I mean, most of us don't, but, no. but, you know, gives it, up time with his wife, yeah. you know, he leaves his, his wife stays home often mm -hmm. and he's gone almost every weekend. And you know, that gets, that gets hard, you know, and, which by the way, she was amazing as our pit crew, her was, and uh, Savannah, right? Yes. Yeah, Savannah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They're both. They, they did amazing. Huge life and, service. You know, and Hobbit, the little bit that she helped, she was she was also helping yeah. Tegan and Sherry, but yeah. Hobbit was over there helping too. But I mean, it was it's just amazing, like I said, to see this team and the the just how much everyone gives. Like I said, most people don't. I I think a lot of people don't think about the back end. They just see what they see, and I think they think that you know. It's this big, huge organization that has all these donations and everything's paid for. No, not at all. You know, mm -hmm. most of the stuff's coming out of pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, most of us are traveling on our own dime. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why a lot of it, you know, picking, you know, everyone meeting at Joey's and driving down and mm -hmm. all of that is to, to save cost mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And and all that. It's like when I, I'm going to Florida, but I'm only doing the beast because I'm flying back. I have to fly back Sunday morning. But like for a hotel, I'm just staying in Dawn's. <laughs> like I'll sleep on your floor, whatever, dude. <laughs> there's a lot that. of there's a lot of air mattresses mm -hmm. and sleeping bags. Um, I mean, one point in New Jersey, we had a we got a, a condo that was right off the off the ski resort where the race is, and literally, um, there was this little um, alcove kind of thing where it had a bed where a couple girls slept in the bed and then all the rest of us slept on the floor like around it and you literally had to like step over people to get to the bathroom but that was our little space and that was just mm -hmm. what we had to do to make sure we could all afford to get there and we all had space and you know it's yeah it's like i told joey i think what houston is a March and I'm like, if you have a team in Houston and everyone needs to come down, my house is about an hour, I think, from the venue. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a spare bedroom, a huge living room, and three quarters of an acre. So, <laughs> there's there have definitely been tents and hammocks outside some Airbnbs this yeah, last summer. Like I said, <laughs> so as long as everyone doesn't mind an hour drive, you can people can stay in my house. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. My wife even knew she's like, oh, so everyone's gonna stay here at Houston before I even said it. I'm like, well, that's an option if they want it. So, but yeah, I've I've definitely had a a, a a basement full of team members without my husband even. <laughs> my son didn't know, and he sleeps down there. He came out of his bedroom and was like who are these people? And I'm like, Oh, they came in at two o'clock in the morning. They just yeah, let themselves yeah. in. And <laughs> There's a bunch of homeless people down here. I don't know <laughs> these people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I said, anyone, everyone, you know, the team is welcome to come stay here for Houston, you know, or whatever. You'll just have to deal with a couple cats and a dog. The dog's friendly though. So I love some dogs. The cats are, the cats are kind of friendly, but you never know. One of them will cuddle and then bite you. You never know. No. Oh. So, so your next one's Central Florida, and then you're you're on break for a while. I am on break from at least OCR. I've just got some like winter local winter stuff I'm gonna do around here. But yep, Central Florida. We're doing the whole uh, trifecta. Erica is in has is now stateside she flew in from tanzania last week two weeks mm -hmm. ago um and she's going to be here for um, a month or two so she'll be in central florida so i'm i kind of just blamed her and if she's on the course i'm her horse mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'll be with her um but on sunday we're doing a really cool thing um it's a collaboration with Oscar Mike and the Virginia, or excuse me, not Virginia, Florida VA, um, where we're we're gonna have, I want to say they have like thirty vets that are gonna be out on course with us. So between all of the team members, we'll have um, somebody with kind of the the spectrum of abilities. I believe we have one person that's actually in a wheelchair, 
Um, and then we have walkers, we have joggers, um, uh, you know, people with P sorry, PTSD, um, you know, actual um, physical um, injuries, you know, mm -hmm. from the military. Um, but anyway, that and uh, Joe Decina is there. And last year we did this, the same thing, but it was a lot smaller of a group. Yeah. Um, and it was so powerful. Just the, the, the wave, you know, us leaving the corral was fantastic. Um, yeah. and see, that was one that I really wanted to be a part of, but it was kind of one of those things. Like once I'd heard about it, I had already set up just being there for the beast because yeah. I'm flying in Friday, I'm doing the beast. And then I fly back out Sunday. Cause I don't want, I, I haven't been at my job long enough to have enough vacation. Yeah. And I'm taking vacation for the kids between for an, a week between Christmas and New Year's to go hang out with the kids mm -hmm. since we just moved it to, to Houston. So it's one of those things I really wish. I mean, if I'd known, yeah. I might've tried to like get a later flight, but I'm just like, I'm kind of, yeah. And plus no. it's my, it's, it's my birthday. I know. Birthday. So, we'll and for it, like, we'll it'll, it'll actually be the first time since me and my wife have been married that I have not spent my birthday with her. So, so that's why I want to make sure I get back early yeah. Sundays so that I can spend the, the day with her. So, yeah. um, but that's it'll important. be, and, and it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Just even the beast. So it's like I told Jerry, I'll be there for the beast, whatever the team needs. I'm there. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to have to hold the flag up like mm -hmm. this, almost like statue of Liberty. Uh, oh, they did the <laughs> national anthem to me again. Yep. Yep. Um, while they did that. Yep. Um, through the swamp. You know about the oh, swamp, yeah. right? I've heard about it. I did in Dallas. There was a little swamp, and so I practiced. I walked through that with the flag as high as I could take it, you know, to make sure it didn't hit the water. This is a big swamp. So it, it was only maybe like a hundred feet oh. in Dallas. So and it only got up to like waist high. So I just kind of sat there with the flag high enough that it didn't hit the water. I'll just so. put it this way: I don't like being short in no, situations okay. like that. But We're gonna have to fight any alligators. I'm just gonna I'm gonna crawl on top of Henry and just We're all gonna crawl on top of Henry. I know <laughs> I'll be filed on him. <laughs> it's gonna be his training for the death race. Exactly. Exactly. I told Henry I need to get him on the episode just so I can listen to that voice. But <laughs> I know, right? Yes. I told him he's like a young I mean, he reminds me of like a young Sean Connery. Just the look, the the voice, everything. I'm like yeah might as well be out here that. with the original james bond i can see that i can see that yeah uh he was he was a character that i'm i was i uh, blessed to meet and befriend and instantly call brother he's yeah. awesome oh so. he's amazing and that was the other thing the whole group everyone we had i mean everyone i met with the team i mean dale i met at the you know the last race mark sherry tegan you know, and then at World's Toughest, you, you know, uh, Jason, Jason, right? Jonathan. Jonathan. Dang it. I knew it. <laughs> there was a Jason though. Jason. Yeah. Oh, other, yeah, yeah, yeah. With Jason, the Phoenix. Yes. Yeah. No. Jason, Jonathan. I meant Jonathan, but I'm just trying to like make myself feel better. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jonathan, Jason, you know, Tim, everybody, you know, Joey, you, Henry. You could just, you could just call him Savannah's dad. Savannah's dad. I almost did. I almost did. Man. But, you know, <laughs> I Michelle, hope I mean, this. <laughs> everybody that we, you know, there, it was just everybody on the team, just it, it they're so selfless. They, mm -hmm. They're out there for the athlete. And like I said, nobody's paying them to be out there. No one's paying for them to be out there. No. No. They're paying their own way. All of it. All of it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I, I purposefully don't keep track of how much it costs to race with yeah. the team. Yeah. Purposely. I don't I'm want to have know. to do the same. Yeah. My husband has asked me a couple of times and I'm like, I don't want to know. Yeah. And neither uh, do you. <laughs> no. And there's a couple of things I do besides that. Like, I, I mean, I do the, the, you know, the triathlons and stuff like, you know, some dummy just signed up for an Ironman in April, but hmm. yeah. <laughs> It's only a half. Okay. Yeah, it's half Iron Man. That's okay. So we'll see if that doesn't kill me. But <laughs> the week after Worlds, um, Worlds Toughest, 
there was uh, our local like big marathon mm -hmm. that happens here in the city. It's it's a pretty big. I mean, it's it's a qualifier race for a lot of the other marathons. But anyhow, it's a road race. Um, I used to always do the half marathon kind of religiously. I gave it up when I found trail running. Long story short, I had no intention of doing it. I went to go pick up my pack, the the uh, my husband's packet for him. He was doing it. And I walked in there and I was like, FOMO, signed up right there to do it. Um, let me just tell you, I hurt so bad after a half marathon on the road compared to World's Toughest. I mean, mm -hmm. no, I hurt, but in relation to like the amount of miles in proportion, oh my God, there was so much pain. And I was like, give me, give me an, an OCR, give me a 24 hour trail event. I don't care. Just get me off the road. I was like, that has yeah. to be my last one. I can't, but especially a yeah. week, a week after worlds, I was like, oh yeah, the road, the road. And that's one thing I've gotten the, the trails. I love the trails so much more because it's just, it's so much nicer on my body. Mm-hmm. Because the, the, I ain't getting any younger. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, we're definitely past. I think we're past the hour. So probably whatever. Donald yell at me later. <laughs> but is there anything you want to say to the listeners before we, we go? Um, I, the, the, the things that the, the main thing I would mention is um, right now, um, through the end of the year, I want to say it goes, we have a really awesome opportunity for um, folks out there who are looking for um, um, race codes and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to do an ultra and you look uh, like a Spartan ultra and you see that it's 200, whatever it is now, 230 bucks. Um, an arm and a leg. Mm -hmm. It's an arm and a leg. Yes. Oh, arm and a leg for sure. Maybe two legs. Um, if you are able to go onto the more heart and scars website and you donate to more heart a hundred bucks, you can get a race code that will pay for that ultra. So yes, it, it would cost you a hundred dollars for the ultra. That's really fantastic. And yes, it will go to help Things like wheelchair maintenance, tolls for traveling, um, food for the athletes, because we do our best to make sure they're not paying for things. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff is um, expenses that, you know, that we need to cover. So this is a great opportunity for um, anyone who wants to, you know, either try out an ultra or even just try to get a group of friends together for some a cup you know for like a sprint because those can get pricey when you start adding them up have each friend just donate a hundred bucks and joey will um get you all a code that you can mm -hmm. race with and it helps us and helps it with does. fantastic charity we are mm -hmm. an official 501c3 so it's it's legit check out the website um I think and there'll personally. be a link for that in the, the if there's not a link, there'll be a link in the notes. There's also on BeastNet's Facebook page. I mean, yeah, we, there's links all over. You can find them. And if you can't, message me and I'll send it to you. Same here. Um, yeah. yeah. And more, yeah, More Heart is very active on social media too. So you can always message and um, just leave comments, whatever. But that's always great. And even if you don't want to code, donations are always awesome and welcome and yeah. tax tax deductible i think i don't know <laughs> uh, i think so i think because it's a 501c i think there's a tax deduction there yeah but... i think there is but no. but that would be that that's the big takeaway from this is that we do all of this work because we love these folks we want everyone to know they are more than their scars that they are so much more and they're able to do more than you know they were probably told it the moment of injury or yeah. what, what their, their depression is telling them they can and can't do. We are able to do so much more and we are bigger than our scars. So it, yeah. helping us get that message out is, is awesome. And, and yeah. would be always. Yeah. Appreciated. Not your friends. No. And it's one of those things too. And if you ever have problems, 
I mean, anybody at more heart than scars, anything like that, like we said, it's, it's not just the scars that you can see. It's not just people that are in wheelchair. It's not just, you know, the obvious ones. It's also the mental ones. It's the scars that you can't see. It's the scars that there's a lot of us that have internal issues, like not just mentally, but physically that you can't see then. And is why it makes it, you know, that's why you never judge the help that someone needs on a course or what they're doing on a course. We're there to help. We don't know. And I'll be honest, and not sound this in a bad way, but I don't care what you what they are. If you need help, you ask, mm -hmm. and I will always help. Mm -hmm. You know, I just I just talked to a good friend of mine, Dave, and he was talking about how he is he he's like never gone over the walls, and I'm like, well, you're gonna be in Central Florida, you're going over every wall. Mm -hmm. Stick with me, you'll go over. I will make every sure wall. you get over every single one of those walls. Every wall. And that's that's what we do. Yeah. So, um, if you need anything, you know, ever anybody who's listening or, or watching, you know, call us, message me. I mean, there's also phone numbers uh, that you can call. What is 988? 988 is the, 9, 988 is, the is the, is the new um, and easy to remember. Oh my God. Um, mm -hmm. Helpline suicide yeah. uh, hotline. Um, and if you just want to talk, even if, even yes. if you're not thinking of self-harm or, or suicide or anything, you're just yes. in a dark place. Cool. You know, that's like my good friend, Dave. I mean, common man OCR. Every once in a while, he'll just be like, "Hey, do you want to record an episode?" Yes, I do. Let, let's talk, because I know he needs to get something off his chest, and he needs to talk, and that's what we're here for. Nice. I do want to share, and this is just personal. Um, on Facebook, um, I'm Amanda Kelly, and anyone is welcome to inbox me if there's something heavy. Um, not only do I just care. Um, I'm also a trained professional. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I'm not giving out meds, but I'm, I'm, I'm there for, for more than just a friendly gesture. And so I want people to know that inbox is open here. I know people message Joey all the time as well, um, or, or the charity even, but we are here. And if you're local to me here in Houston or whatever, and you need to go have a coffee, whatever breakfast, lunch, whatever. Thanks for listening to the Beast Net podcast. If you haven't done it yet, right. find us on Facebook. Well, you, like Amanda. and share the amazing, podcast. And I will see you Give soon. us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.